Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We welcome you to our second Sunday of, of Easter. And today, as we uh, look at the Word of God today, we want to enter into a new worship series today. We're calling this series Hope Rises. And the uh, objective of this series is to look at different stories of resurrection and new life in the Bible beyond the story of Jesus' resurrection. We're going to look today at the resurrection of Lazarus, and next week we're going to look at the story of Jairus' daughter. The following week we're going to look at the story of Elijah raising the widow's son. Following that we're going to look at the story of the Israelites entering the promised land, and then after that we're going to look at the Israelites crossing the Red Sea. And all of these stories are stories of new life, stories of resurrection. And within that, we're going to observe how we live as resurrected people because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So today, as we begin our time uh, in, this, in this sermon series, we want to look at the story of Lazarus' raising. In this story today, Martha especially and her sister Mary both, are very upset with Jesus for not being there before Lazarus had died. They, they know Jesus has an amazing power. And they both say to Jesus, had you been here, my brother would not have died. So they, they, they know that Jesus is all-powerful. But what Jesus' miracle and sign is to help understand is in the discourse with him and Martha, he says to her, just to clear things up, I am the resurrection and the life. Jesus is the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, Jesus says, have everlasting life. See, Martha knew that there was a resurrected hope, but her hope in resurrection was a, a future-oriented hope in resurrection. But Jesus makes it clear that the resurrection is the here and the now, as well as the then and not yet. We call this a realized eschatology, a, a, a focus on our abundant life, our everlasting life here in the present as resurrected people. I know a lot of people, and, and maybe you do yourself, who believe in Jesus Christ for the purposes of a hope and a salvation beyond this life. But what Jesus is saying to Martha is that the resurrection begins now, begins today. It is not a, a life to be lived. It is a life that we live now. And in the raising of Lazarus, Jesus makes it very clear what a resurrected life looks like. So, to be clear, with Martha, Jesus tells her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, yet though they die, they shall live and have everlasting life. Jesus then arrives, and, and Mary, likewise, just the same as Martha is upset that, that Jesus wasn't here soon enough. And, and she tells him, she says, Jesus, had you been here, my brother would not have died. Jesus then goes into his own grief as he experiences the grief of those who loved Lazarus. And there, in his own grief, Jesus shows to us that he is both human and divine. 
that he, he experiences what we experience in pain and suffering and even grief and loss. As Jesus goes to Lazarus' tomb, it is very evident that Lazarus has been dead for four days. And according to the Jewish customs and according to the Jewish beliefs, that the soul left the body after three days. That's what the Jews believe. So, so this is not just a mere resuscitation of Lazarus. This is a full-blown resurrection of Lazarus. According to the Jewish belief that, that his soul had already left his body. And there, more evidence that he is dead is the stench, the smell of the dead man. The smell of the evidence that this person is not just asleep, but that is dead. And it's this next part that I want us to pay very close attention to, especially for the purposes of this sermon today. When the tombstone is rolled away, Jesus calls Lazarus by name. Lazarus, come out, Jesus says. And the reason for this is because just in the previous chapter in the Gospel of John, in John chapter 10, Jesus spends an extensive time discussing what it means for him to be the good shepherd. And for the sheep to hear his voice. For the shepherd to know the sheep by name. And the shepherd, being Jesus Christ, calls us into discipleship by calling our name. The good shepherd knows your name. The good shepherd knows my name. And Jesus calls us into everlasting, abundant, resurrected life. It is by calling Lazarus by name that Jesus is offering him something beyond death, more than death, a resurrected life. And as we look forward in the gospel, of John, after the resurrection of Jesus Christ, Jesus calls Mary by name. And he says to her, Mary. And as soon as she hears her name called by the Good Shepherd, she immediately is awakened to who he is, who he truly is. He's not a gardener. He is the risen Christ. And then in Jesus' last conversation with the disciples before his death in the Gospel of John, Jesus tells the disciples, he says, I no longer call you servants, but I call you my friends. Jesus calls us by name. We have a friend in Jesus Christ. The good shepherd, the one who watches out for us, the one who protects us, the one who offers us abundant, everlasting, resurrected life. That is the one who calls us by name. And when Jesus calls Lazarus by name, he says, Lazarus, come out. And it is then that Lazarus is called to unbind himself, to come out of his tomb. 
And so I ask you today, what do you need to be unbound from to experience the everlasting eternal life in Jesus Christ? From what tomb do you need to step out of to enter into what God has for you through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Today, as resurrected people, we know that we have the ability to live beyond our brokenness, beyond our sin, beyond the things that separate us from God and other people. We have an abundant, everlasting, eternal life prepared for us. So just as Jesus rose Lazarus from the dead and then entered into his own death and resurrection. So today, Jesus calls us by name. Say your name with me. John, come out. I have abundant and everlasting and resurrected life for you. Will you unbind yourself? Will you come out of your tomb to experience the life with our friend, Jesus Christ? I pray that you will. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we depart this morning, I want to offer you these words of peace. And then we will welcome another song uh, by Philip as he plays for us, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. But as we go forth today and as we receive this, this closing song, I pray that you receive this blessing from the one who created you, from the one who redeemed you and restored you, from the Holy Spirit who guides and directs you forevermore. Amen.